Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We're happy to welcome our parishioners and guests to St. Joseph's as we begin the holy season of Lent as we celebrate Ash Wednesday Mass. These are today's announcements. The Knights of Columbus are having a fish fry today from 5 to 7 p.m. at the KC Hall. During Lent, there will be Stations of the Cross on Wednesdays following noon Mass and every Friday at 7 p.m. in the church. Please make this a part of your Lenten devotion. Father Wilhelm is the celebrant for this Mass, assisted by Deacon Ken and Deacon Boggan, and I am Joanne Kitchens, your lector. Let us prepare our hearts to celebrate Holy Mass. Our opening hymn is number 105 in the Missalette, In These Days of Lenten Journey, number 105. Blessed Ash Wednesday to all of you, and it's beautiful to see all of you here as we come to begin this beautiful season of Lent. And as we begin this Mass, I want you to think about what you want at the end of these 40 days. What gift do you want as you go through these 40 days of Lent as we go to Easter? And so I want you to think about that and to pray for those intentions. Our Mass intention particularly today is for the repose of the soul of Sheila Jerome Hannison. And we pray for your intentions and we pray for the end of coronavirus and we thank God we are in time of green and we look forward as we move down to time of blue where um, we can have life and have life normally. And so we have much to pray for. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace and the love of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, that may we begin with holy fasting this campaign of Christian service, so that as we take up battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with the weapons of self-restraint. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now for our scripture readings. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. 
Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts, not your garments, and return to the Lord your God. For gracious and merciful is he, slow to anger, rich in kindness, and relenting in punishment. Perhaps he will again relent and leave behind him a blessing, offerings and libations for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, proclaim a fast, call an assembly, gather the people, notify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom quit his room and the bride her chamber. Between the porch and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare, O Lord, your people, and make not your heritage a reproach with the nations ruling over them. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord was stirred to concern for his land and took pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response, Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin, cleanse me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. For I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Give me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustain in me. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Working together, then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain, for he says, In an acceptable time I heard you, and on the day of salvation I helped you. Behold, now is a very acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. Jesus said to his disciples, Take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense. 
from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you. They have reached their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing, so that your almsgiving may be secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on street corners, so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you. They have received the reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you. They have, reached, have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you may not appear to be fasting except to your Father who is hidden. And your Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, as we come together to begin our time with the Lord in a very special way to remember his walk to the cross. Remember, the word Lent means an eternal spring. That's what Lent means. Well, oftentimes, I think Lent means it's suffering and penance. Some of those things are a part of getting to spring, isn't it? going through our cold weather and getting past where things are starting to melt, where we start to see grass coming and the leaves starting to bud. You and I are 40 days away from Easter. We begin our 40 days. And in the scriptures, 40 is always a number of perfection, of conclusion, of fullness. And we see where it comes from especially when we talk about Lent being a time in the desert. Moses, he spent 40 years in the desert, and the people had struggles, and they turned away from God and then came back to God, but they had their eyes placed on the place that was promised by God, the place of milk and honey, the promised land. And they went for 40 days. Our Lord spent 40 days right after he came to do his first miracle, but he had 40 days to, what? to get ready for his ministry. What is his ministry? To teach and preach the gospel, the way you and I are to walk through life to get to heaven. You and I get to spend our 40 days in preparing for Easter. I want you to think about what do you expect after these 40 days when you get to Easter? I want you to really pray about that. What do you expect that you're going to receive from God after going through 40 days of Lent? You and I all know that after all of these 40 happenings in the Scripture, there's some extraordinary gift. God has a gift for each of you after 40 days days of Lent this year, to make this the best Lent that you have ever had, 
since you have been born, since you have had the time that you realize Lent, to say, Lord, I'm going through this and I, I know you have something beautiful for me. We always say that Lent has kind of a three-legged stool, and we hear it today in Matthew's Gospel that we have prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. I call it the Holy Trinity of Lent. And that first beautiful gift of prayer, you and I know how important prayer is, that communion with God. But, you know, we need Lent to step back to say, how much time have we really spent with God in prayer? I would challenge you, all of us like a special night during the week that we like to watch, I don't know, The Bachelor or <laughs> some kind of things that you watch on TV today. I would say that you pick one day, Thursday. And I think that's the day Blue Bloods is on. I'm not too sure, but I know one of those days and people love those shows. To take that time from 7 to 9 o'clock and to say, you know what, instead of watching that during Lent, I'm going to spend that whole time to pray, to study. And one of the things is to take the scriptures, read through the New Testament, start with a beautiful, beautiful book. People never start with this book, but I think it's a great book to go through. Go through the book of St. James. Read that beautiful book because it inspires us to live the Christian life to take that time to pray. And I tell you, what it does is it takes away the fat of our soul. What do I mean by that? We've gotten a little lazy. Maybe our souls have gotten a little plump with all sorts of things that don't belong with our soul. Across the street, we have a great business. People, and I don't see a lot of gray-haired coming out of that. I see a lot of young people who are in their 20s to 30s, and they're still trying to hang on to their beauty and their form. <laughs> Yesterday uh, at 6 o'clock in the morning, I was walking out because I had a meeting in Fargo with our bishop, the deans met, and there were four people coming out in their exercise clothes with these protein shakes. And they're working on their bodies to make them sleek and beautiful so maybe these women can fit into that beautiful black dress. Well, what do we need to do to get rid of the fat of our soul? What do we need to do? What kind of a exercise shake do we need in the prayer life to give us the injection to really pray more deeply and sincerely? That's the first leg of the Blessed Trinity of Lent. The second one is very helpful, fasting, fasting. And we think about taking less food. I propose to you, get away from the noisiness of the world. We have so much noise. Turn off CNN, Fox Network, turn off uh, all of those news stations, turn them off. Turn them off for 40 days. I'm going to promise you're going to be a much happier person after those 40 days to get rid of that, that noise. People talk all over the place to fast. And I always say, what did our Lord do? He went into the desert, to the quiet of the desert. And I want you to hear not the rumbling of your stomach because you're fasting. You know, when we eat less food, our stomach rumbles. I would say I'd like your soul to rumble because it's telling you your soul is hungering for a deeper relationship and God is calling you to that. So what kind of fasting do you need to do to feed the soul and starve out the noisiness of the world? The last part of the Trinity I call of Lent is almsgiving. We can give a million ways to help others. Right now, you know, what do we have? Right now we have the capital campaign. Now we got God's gift. And what else are we going to have to have forward to us? All they do is they talk about getting money. Well, you know something? There's different ways 
to give alms. There's lots of hungers and thirsts in the world to help and assist in different ways. And one of the things that I would say to give almsgiving to those who are struggling physically, those who are sick, those who are struggling emotionally, to give to people who we know that are having struggles during this time with depression. I would say even those who are having spiritual struggles. I heard a story right before Mass that um, a group of people got together and they bought pizza and they thought they were going to have this wonderful conversation about just little things. And they got into a spiritual conversation and they had to give alms, they had to give of themselves to share the beauty and the witness to their faith. There's different ways to give alms. 40 days. What do you expect after this 40 days? There's an extraordinary gift that God is going to have for you if you pray to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and use these three ways of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. God has something special for you. Are you willing to do the work to receive the beautiful grace and gift at Easter? May our God be forever blessed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear people, we're going to prepare ourselves now to receive ashes. And traditionally, ashes are always put on the forehead with the sign of the cross. Our Holy Father, throughout a universal mandate in the Catholic Church, and remember the Catholic Christian Church is the largest church in the world, and we need, as it said in that opening prayer, to begin our spiritual campaign. And we start this beautiful Lent with ashes. And as you come forward, you're not going to receive it on your forehead. You're going to have it sprinkled over your head. And so it's another sign to receive those ashes, as ashes were placed on the head and forehead as a sign of going into repentance. And remember, there's three ways to do penance. Confession. The other two ways is when we think about past sins, this is the right way to do it, to say, Ah, Lord, those past things I can give to you and you're strengthening me to live life now. But the third type of penance we have to avoid, it's where we condemn ourselves and allow the evil spirit to attack us, to say, Look at the way you live your life. Look at the way you're living your life. That's the wrong type of penance because... It doesn't bring any lifting up of God to strengthen us to do the goodness of penance. After you receive your ashes here in the middle, I'm going to ask you to take along, it's called the pocket prayer quilt. And on the back, there is a little prayer, and it even has a little pin. And so us men, we can pin it in our top pockets or in our coats. Women, you can pin it maybe on the little part of your bra strap up here, that every time you have that, that little prayer quilt, that it covers us with God's love and a reminder that we're in this beautiful season of grace. Please stand together. Our help is in the name of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us humbly ask God our Father that he may be pleased to bless with the abundance of his grace these ashes which we will put on our heads in the form of penance. O God, who desire not the death of sinners, but for their conversion, mercifully hear our prayers, and in your kindness be pleased to bless, to consecrate, 
and to make holy these ashes which we intend to receive upon our heads, that we who acknowledge we are but dust, and to dust we shall return, may through a steadfast observance of Lent gain pardon for our sins and newness of life after the likeness of your risen Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please join us in singing number 97 in the Missal, Ashes, number 97.
precious from the good we fail to do we rise again from ashes redeemed O Lord by dreams our stumbling's gift erection our visions
band together. Thank you for your beautiful reception of the ashes. And as we now turn to the Lord with a heart that is ready to do his will, our hearts are open. The Holy Spirit is stirring us into deeper faith. And we present our prayers to him to come to that eternal Easter, that beautiful gift that God is working through us. For the church throughout the world, may the Lord lead us into a deeper conversion of heart through the practices of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That nations experiencing war and violence may achieve lasting peace and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the poor and the homeless, that by the charity of Christians and people of goodwill, they may find proper housing this winter. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all in our parish, may the Lord help us persevere in our Lenten commitments in the face of distractions and temptations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who have died in our parish, and for Sheila Jerome Hennison, whom this holy mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord God, may you bless us with many supporters of different sized gifts, but also a few fairly substantial gifts that will help assure our faith in our future campaign success. Now, please take your prayer card in the pew and let us offer our campaign prayer. Father in heaven, ever-living source of all that is good, keep us faithful in serving you, for to serve you is our lasting joy. Jesus, son of a carpenter, open our hearts, joining us together as one body united in faith, having gifts of time, talent, and treasure that differ according to the grace given to us. May we use them to glorify you and bring our parish family closer to your sacred heart. Holy Spirit, enlighten us with your gifts of wisdom, understanding, and knowledge as we move forward with our parish faith in our future campaign. As our ancestors, strengthened by faith, laid the foundation we pray that you give us the same fortitude to meet the growing needs of our parish family. Mary, seat of wisdom, pray for us. Saint Joseph, our patron saint, pray for us. All holy men and women, pray for us. Amen. Please be seated for the offertory. Our offertory hymn is number 189 in the hymnal, Hosea, number 189.
family that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the, may the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all of his holy church. As we solemnly offer the annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent we entreat you O Lord that through works of penance and charity we may turn away from harmful pleasures and cleanse from our sins, may become worthy to celebrate devoutly the passion of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for through bodily fasting you restrain our faults, raise up our minds, and bestow birth, both virtue and its reward through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions, adores, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. With one voice we pray, join with theirs, and humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the offer the prayer, the Eucharistic prayer of reconciliation. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your church's offering and pour out on them the power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we were once lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love for your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way when supper was ending, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through the blood to be shed on the cross. He took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more, giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate, the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace. We celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you who are faithful and our merciful God, the sacrificial victim who reconciles to you, Father, the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of the one bread and the one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and John Folda, our Bishop, Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you saints among the saints in the halls of heaven with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her beloved spouse, with your blessed apostles, Saints Peter and Paul and all the saints, and with all of our deceased brothers and sisters whom we humbly commend to your mercy, then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Again, this first part of that beautiful three-legged stool of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, we come here and we pray in the way Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. 
In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Have a blessed Lent, and let's keep praying for each other and supporting one another in the faith. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Me no Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen.
Our communion hymn is number 346, Humbly We Adore Thee, number 346 in the hymnal.
Christ at his last supper, breaking bread decreed. This my body take and eat, heavenly food indeed. Then he blessed the cup of wine, take and drink, he said. Now with glad thanks give praise Christ glorified. He in us is present, we in him abide. Members of his body. Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received sustain us, O Lord, that our Lenten fast may be pleasing to you and be for us a healing remedy through Christ our Lord. Just by way of announcement, on the 19th of March is the Feast of St. Joseph, our holy patron, and our bishop is going to be coming here and dedicating the Diocese of Fargo 
to St. Joseph in this year of St. Joseph. It's a big deal. And so our parish and all churches that have the name of St. Joseph, so that's us, I should say Tolna, North Dakota, and we. <laughs> so um, we are churches of pilgrimage, all of those who bear the name of Joseph, which means increase. And so increase in God's love and his mercy. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Pour out a spirit of compunction, O Lord, on those who bow before your majesty. And by your mercy, may they merit the rewards you promise to those who do penance. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is number 102 in the Missal, led by the Spirit, number 102.